What's up, YouTuber Black Atheist? This video was about, uh, you can see this picture here. I posted this on my personal Facebook page last Sunday. And I got a message from a uh, Christian on my Facebook page. Um, as you can read it, what he's saying. Uh, funny thing, he goes to church with my mom. And so he's trying to use my mom, as you can read, as a... Uh, an emotional sticking point to try to get me to soften my stance or apologize and say I didn't mean it because my mom loves Jesus so I shouldn't be mean but I've never made any statements to him or to anyone that I destined, detest and degrade Jesus I really don't care about Jesus I care about the nonsense that Christians are rambling about so that's why you know I do what I do as an atheist so you know, I'm just curious as to why Jesus hides his accomplishments and miracles behind things that people could do on their own. Like I have a cousin today who's she got a job. She thanked Jesus for the job. Like she was completely incapable of getting the job herself. Or if you look at this picture, Tim Tebow, you know, he thanks Jesus. There are football players who thank Jesus for scoring touchdowns. Like, they wouldn't be able to do it on their own otherwise. Or this woman who found her keys. Well, someone in this world has thanked Jesus for finding their car keys as if they would not be able to find them at all had they not believed in Jesus. Like, wherever they fell, wherever those keys were, if they didn't believe in Jesus, those keys wouldn't have been there. They would have been there regardless. Keys don't move. And it wasn't a miracle that you found them. You know, but you got this third picture with this starving African child. And I know it's our job as a society to take care of the less fortunate. But if Jesus is actually, in reality, manipulating human resource offices and football players' hands for success for certain people don't you think he should at least you know make some food appear out of nowhere to feed hungry people I mean he, he's doing these miracles for for people who don't need it and then people who do need it it seems like they don't get shit you know why I think I think it's because Jesus isn't real I think Jesus is dead if he ever lived and he's not coming back nor does he does he work miracles for you? You put yourself in the position you are with your life. And anything you do accomplish or don't accomplish is your fucking fault. My brother had me laughing. <laughs> because uh, when we were trying to buy this house. Me and my girlfriend trying to buy this house. We finally got the house. But we went through a lot of shit because of the... Uh, the loan officer was just an asshole. He was lazy. And he was disorganized, and we got him every single bit of information that he ever asked for, but he kept asking for more and more information. He never just told us, this is what you guys would need. He kept asking us for more and more money um, for certain fees and things that we didn't know we had to pay, and it was a hassle to come up with the money, and he just, it was just a frustrating time. So I was posting on my Facebook status how frustrating I was, it was to deal with this guy. So I guess my parents were praying for me or whatever, and my brother tells me, you know, Dad said the only reason why you guys got the house is because they prayed for you. I'm like, really? So if they hadn't have prayed for me, and I would have quit my job, would I have still gotten the house? Never mind, it was me that got a job. It was my girlfriend that got a job that make enough money to make the down payment. If they hadn't have prayed for us, then we wouldn't have done anything. I had the credit score to get the house. So if you hadn't prayed for me, I wouldn't have been paying my bills to get a high credit score like I did anyway. I mean, I I don't understand. How did praying for me get me in the house? I would have gotten in the house because the requirements don't require a miracle. Have enough money, have a good credit score, you'll get in the house. These people will do anything to justify their bullshit. It just, it, it just, it... Oh my God, it's just amazing to me. And so, anyway, with this clown, um, after I reply to him, he just says, Amen. I apologize if I offended you and will leave it be. Peace. That's what he says at the end of it. 
He doesn't answer any of my questions. I really wanted an answer to those questions, but I'm not going to bug him anymore because he gets on my fucking nerves. I know asking a Christian a question is like trying to get blood out of a rock. It just does not happen. They do not answer your questions. How do you know when you beat a theist in a debate? When they duck your questions and avoid you and give short answers. That's when you know you have them beat. So I'm just going to assume that I got this clown beat and that he won't be bugging me again. But if he does bug me again, I'm going to go to war on his bitch ass. He tried to bring my mom into this and make me feel guilty because my mom believes in Jesus. I love my mom, but if she wants to believe and a, have a, a love loving relationship with a, a character in a book, that's her. That's up to her. I still love her. She still loves me. My mom has never said anything to me regarding my atheism. She, I don't even think she gives a damn. But she loves me anyway. And I know that's more than most atheists could say about their parents. But for him to bring that into, bring that into our conversation and, and try to use it against me, I just thought was a really punk-ass move. That was a bitch move, Rodney, just to let you know. So uh, that's pretty much my rant for this video. It is really, really fucking frustrating when someone tries to use your own mother against you in an argument. She had nothing at all to do with it. And I think I owned him pretty well. Let me know if you agree or not. And uh, I will hit y'all with a new video coming soon. Peace.